I get a lot, a lot, so many, so many questions about African cichlids. DMs, emails, comments, etc. People are always asking me about African cichlids. Today, I'm gonna to share with you kind of my beginner's guide on getting into African cichlids. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks. Now I can't fault anybody for reaching out to me about African cichlids. It is my logo. It is pretty much how I got started here on YouTube, even though I care for lots of other different types of fish from all over the world. African cichlids is what a lot of people know me for. Now, first of all, Africa is a giant continent. There are lots of different regions within Africa with cichlids. There are cichlids that live in streams, in lakes, in rivers, etc. Um, we are really going to be focusing on East Africa. Um, and when someone refers to African cichlids, they're usually talking about fish from East Africa. They're not talking about jewel cichlids or anything else. They're usually talking just about East Africa fish. Usually it's Lake Malawi, sometimes Lake Tanganyika, and sometimes Lake Victoria. So for today's purposes, we're kind of be we're kind of be going to be focusing on Lake Malawi. Now I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you've kept fish before. Uh, maybe you have a couple of aquariums and you are thinking about getting into African cichlids. So hopefully you understand how to set up an aquarium, how to properly make sure that your tank is ready to accept fish, whether you're doing a nitrogen cycle or adding live plants, etc. Hopefully you have all of those basics down because this is not that video. Um, there are a lot of videos about that. This is also not a video about how to set up an African cichlid tank. Um, I actually recently made a video just a few months ago and I'll put a link of it up here. And that video kind of talks about how to set up an African cichlid aquarium and kind of the steps along the way. Some of the things I cover in this video are applicable to that video and vice versa. Um, additionally, this is not a video about how to care for African cichlids. I did a relatively in-depth video about caring for African cichlids as well. Um, and I'll put that video up there and that will kind of give you a uh, maybe a little deeper dive into caring for the fish specifically. Um, and I've got a whole playlist with African cichlids, so check those out. So anyway, this is kind of helping the person that is new to African cichlids, not necessarily new to fish, but new to African cichlids and kind of getting you guys started out, started along the way. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to do your research and hopefully that's what you're doing now. You're watching this video. Hopefully it's not just for entertainment. Hopefully you're learning something. So you want to do your research. You want to be able to understand uh, what it is that you're getting into. So you want to research the type of fish that you might want to keep, the kind of scape that you might want to have, meaning how you want the tank to be decorated, rocks, open, etc. You'll want to research tank size, uh, you'll want to research uh, the types of equipment, etc. So lots of different things that you want to do in researching um, what to kind of what path to go down as you set up your aquarium. Um, and hopefully you are doing that now and will continue to do that as you look into keeping African cichlids. Now, once you've done all your research and you've kind of figured out what you're looking for, the kind of tank that you are able to care for uh, as far as maintenance, tank size, etc. cetera, um, obviously you'll wanna set that aquarium up and you'll wanna, again, follow those steps that I've made in that other video that uh, show you uh, how to set up that African cichlid tank. Now, once you've done all of that, and this is where I get all of the messages. It's the stocking of the fish, choosing the fish. So what I really advise people here is to not, do not, underline, do not create a stocking list before you get into African cichlids. I will get messages from people that say, I wanna get two of these and two of those and two of these and two of these and two of those and four of those and two of these and six of those. And they've got like 20 fish or something planned out for their 75 gallon aquarium that they've never kept fish in before and they've never done African cichlids before. Folks, this is not Noah's Ark. We don't need to do twos and twos and twos. And I understand the draw and I understand that African cichlids can be really colorful and beautiful to look at. Um, but we really want to make sure that we have some experience with some of these fish before we just start dumping a bunch of money into buying and procuring all of these cool looking fish that we've seen on the internet, seen in books and magazines. Well, I guess people don't do books and magazines anymore, but seen on the internet, watched on YouTube videos. Um, so avoid the, uh, the whole Noah's Ark stocking list thing and um, really 
be patient and take your time. So I really do uh, discourage people from having this entire stocking list idea about the type of fish that you want to keep before you've even kept any fish in that aquarium. You have no idea what you know how that tank is going to react and how you're going to be caring for it um, and if you start dumping hundreds of dollars into it just on fish you could end up with a lot of heartache and i know a lot of people have gone down that path and have discovered too late down the road that they dumped a bunch of money into fish that end up killing each other things like that so my advice is to slow down be patient take your time and choose some fish that are hardy that are not too expensive that are not too aggressive, readily available, buy them at juvenile size. Um, really take your time um, and make sure that they are the right fish that you want. So if you decide that all that you can afford and care for and fit in your space, your apartment, your house, what your room, whatever, is a 55 gallon aquarium, then maybe you're gonna do like a dwarf Mbuna like these beautiful Solosi behind me or some other Mbuna species. Maybe you're doing yellow labs or ACI or something. Maybe just get a few of those and try it out. I would say, you know, instead of saying, I've got this 55 gallon aquarium and I'm gonna stock it with 15 fish, or I have this 75 gallon aquarium and I'm gonna put 20 peacocks in there, don't do that. I've, I've, I've read too many messages, DMs, follow me on Instagram to uh, see my uh, Instagram, but I've seen too many people reach out to me and say, oh, I, I've, I've got this yellow lab and I have this Solosi and I have this living stone eye and this Venustis. And I say, well, wait a minute, that Venustis, that living stone eye might look really cool at four inches, but when that thing's 10, 11, 12 inches, it's going to eat some of your other fish. So really do your research and homework, but take your time on selecting the right fish and don't just have this stocking idea. Now, when it comes to stocking, I've made videos about how to add fish, how many fish to add at one time to avoid aggression and you know fish killing each other, creating hides, etc. Maybe start with a handful. So if you are setting up your aquarium for the first time, you know, instead of saying, I've got that 75 gallon tank and I'm gonna put 20 peacocks in there, which is a lot, but anyway, if you're gonna you know, decide that that's what you're gonna do, maybe start off with six or eight, see how that goes for a couple of months, observe and learn, see if that's really what you wanna do, learn from the fish, because we can tell a lot, uh, we can learn a lot from the fish that we have in our aquarium. So even though we are doing our own research and you know, studying and reading and watching videos, the fish also teach us. So when I keep a fish and that's new to me or a fish that you know I haven't kept a lot of or had a lot of experience with, um, I learn from the fish. I learn their behaviors. I learn what they like, what they don't like, and, and I can alter my own habits to kind of meet their needs, whether it's the water chain schedule, the feeding schedule, maintenance, et cetera. Um, all these kind of things I can learn from the fish and you'll want to do the same thing. What you don't want to do is you don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, buying $20 fish a piece, getting them all, you know, beautiful large males from your favorite online cichlid retailer, getting this big shipment with all these boxes and putting them in your aquarium and then having some disaster Thunderdome chaos battle royale happening in your tank and uh, you know having destruction and a bunch of fish die and you're gonna get unhappy, you're gonna be upset, your spouse is gonna be upset with you, whatever it is, and you've wasted a bunch of money. So take your time, slow down, and just be patient and get a few and just kind of observe and learn from the fish. The other reason why I think it's important to observe as well and take your time is you might learn that that's not really the fish for you. You might see a beautiful peacock or hap tank or a beautiful mbuna tank or something that you've seen somewhere, a photo, a video, and think, wow, that's really beautiful. That's what I want. Once you get those fish, you might realize, whoa, this is way more work than I had anticipated. It's a lot more difficult than my beautiful planted tank where the plants kind of help care for the water and the fish don't kill each other. It, it's a whole different game. And so before you invest a lot of money, before you buy a lot of fish that are gonna might be hard for you to rehome, um, again, take that time because it's kind of like a dog where, you know, maybe you live in an apartment and you see this, uh, you know, this beautiful, uh, you know, bull mastiff or cane corso and you're like, oh my God, I want that dog. But you live in an apartment. That cane corso, probably not the best dog for you because it's gonna be, 
I don't know how big they are, 90 pounds, 100 pounds. They are big dogs, right? And so um, just, again, take your time and, and, and and you'll want to do your research just like just like with fish with the dog to make sure that you're not putting the dog in the wrong environment or it's something that you're not able to care for. Oh my God, I can't believe that this dog requires me to walk it six times a day and giant poop, etc. cetera, um, versus this little chihuahua that I used to have that was so easy to care for. Um, so it's kind of the same analogy with fish. You want to make sure that you have the chance to kind of learn and see if that's what you really want to do. Now, kind of along the lines of that uh, instant gratification, I think a lot of people, when they get into Africa, and cichlids, you're getting into them because of the colors, because they look like the closest thing that you get to saltwater fish, a reef tank, without having to make saltwater or buy saltwater or have, you know, a bunch of expensive saltwater fish. You get a lot of those colors that you would see in the marine environment. So that's very appealing, as well as the behavior of the fish and that they breed and spawn very easily, etc. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the joy in keeping fish, and this is something that I enjoy, and the other people that I've spoken to and talked to, friends of mine that are very experienced with fish, is experiencing kind of the journey and, and the growth. So as an example, this Solosi tank behind me, I started off with like six of them, I think, and a little 40 breeder, and then I expanded this tank, and they kind of, they started spawning and more and more and more grew. Um, but I didn't just start off with, you know, 25 or 30 fish in one tank. I started off with a handful and observed them and looked at their behavior and tried to figure out what was best for them. Um, and that's a lot of the enjoyment and that's a lot of the learning and that's how you really become an experienced fish keeper is by kind of going through that process versus you know someone that says, I want it right now and I want my empty tank to look like this tank tomorrow and you dump, you know, I don't know, $500 worth of fish in there. You dump $500 worth of fish and then you know, disaster happens, like I said before, and it's not what you want. So there you have it. Maybe this is just some real basic advice for new African cichlid keepers. And you could apply this to other types of fish, but African cichlids specifically, because I get so many types of questions, so many questions about them. And uh, because of their behavior, they can be very difficult to keep. So again, you know, do your research, do your homework, try to understand what it is that you're able to care for. Um, and I made that whole other video that you can watch to kind of understand how to set up the tank and, you know, um, uh, understand what, what you're getting into. Um, and then with the stocking, just be patient, take your time. Don't do the Noah's Ark thing. Don't get 20 fish all at once. Don't have a plan of, you know, how it's going to be exactly. It's okay to have a plan, but just be flexible with your plan. Understand that you might have a plan and the fish might have a different plan for you. So you want to learn from your fish. You want to learn from keeping them and that will, you know, ultimately allow you to be more more successful in keeping African cichlids. So I hope this video was helpful for those of you that are new to African cichlids. As I shared before, I do have a lot of other African cichlid videos on this channel. So if you made it this far, I'm assuming that you are into them. So you can go ahead and check out some of those other videos that I've made. Comment down below if I've helped you, if you have any more questions. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.